Coinbase is considered to be one of the best exchanges out there in terms of crypto. I'm going to talk about the equity portion of Coinbase and why I think that the street has it wrong in terms of Coinbase as an exchange. Now, in today's video, I'm going to break down to you what I expect for the quarterly results coming up in the next couple of days, actually in two days, and how I think that's going to affect the crypto markets moving forward, specifically dealing with um, the products that Coinbase is bringing in. Now, one of the things I always look for are the picks and, the picks and shovels for crypto, specifically uh, companies that serve crypto projects and also are able to um, expand on the product offerings and growing so that you can either a invest in these companies or two you can take a look at the trajectories of crypto as a whole as these companies are pouring money in so the benefit of this is to look long term five to ten years to see if the crypto space is still viable so coinbase reported um, their, their earnings a couple of months ago three about three four months ago and they reported that their revenues um, for Q3 of 2023 um, was $623 million. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that they actually went down during that time period and their adjusted EBITDA was $181 million, but their net loss was two. This is going to be the first time if Coinbase is able to turn this around for Q4 if they're able to turn around this number now i'm going to tell you guys a couple of things with this this is a very critical moment for coinbase because if you take a look at coinbase actual numbers as we saw back in um, november let me go back down here real quick you can see that their quarterly subscription revenues were actually above the q3 outlook in august so that was before we had that kind of run up right the other thing also if you take a look at their transaction expenses and their technology equipment that kind of stayed the same but they were able to reduce some of their expenses down from 80 90 million to 78 million that includes their stock-based compensation plan now let me break this down for you for chapter one because the way they break this down is they break down in terms of consumer net and institutional net revenue if you take a look at their consumer net revenue what you'll see is that actually went down in q3 but since you're in crypto and I'm in crypto, we do know that in Q4, the volumes started to go up as Bitcoin price went up. So these, this number right here for the transaction volume should go up. Um, how, how much more should it go up? Definitely matching maybe Q4 or Q3 of 2022. Keep in mind that transaction volume is a function of a bear market and a bull market. During bear markets, people tend to sell a lot and during bull markets, people tend to buy a lot. So we're entering into a bull market, which we've been having for the last three months. Institutional revenue um, also went down a little bit, but this should also go back up. And I'm expecting somewhere a little bit higher than this uh, $20, $20 million revenue. Now it could be a lot higher, obviously. And this will translate specifically because Wall Street is expecting this to drop. They're expecting the transactional revenue to go lower than 288 because they think that the ETS are going to remove some volume, trading volume from the exchange and push it onto the ETF. Now, I disagree with that and there are a couple of reasons why. The people who buy ETFs generally are not going to be going on Coinbase anyway. They're the people who basically are going to be the ones that are on the fence. And the big question is, those people who bought through these exchanges, they weren't going to go here anyway. The people that you're looking for, the people who actually are users of Coinbase, the people who have been there in the past and don't trust the ETFs, that's the transaction revenue that's going to increase because in reality, what's going to happen is the ETF is going to have a separate um, counterintuitive play. The ETF actually for many people is actually a bad thing. Because the people who buy crypto are the ones that believe they should not be part of the traditional finance um, system. And so in reality, they're actually not going to want to touch that. So my, my theory on this is that the transaction volumes are going to be a little higher than usual because people are going to be rushing in to buy the spot ETF. And the second thing, um, not the spot ETF, sorry, the spot, the actual, the actual coin itself because they don't want Wall Street to actually pick all of it up. I know it sounds a little bit, let's just say, uh, 
suspicious, right? But that's kind of like what I think is going to happen. Now, on the stablecoin revenue, Coinbase break it down, breaks it down by, let me just go ahead and zoom this up a little bit. They break it down by um, stablecoin revenue and they break it down by blockchain rewards. Now, stablecoin revenue is basically your USDC revenue that they're having. And um, they're actually earning, um, they're usually investing that into treasuries. They got Circle going on with that. And uh, they're getting about 5%, uh, 3 to 5% on that based off of their year earning for interest from treasury. Now, this number, I expect it to go up. Now, the reason is simple. The Fed is not going to be cutting interest rates anytime soon. So as the Fed maintains the interest rate that they have on their treasury bills, um, companies like Coinbase, who have a lot of stable coins, are basically using that money and putting them into treasuries. Then they're getting that 5% or 4%, whatever you want to, you know, depending upon what, what maturity date you have. And then what they're doing that is they're earning that as a revenue. Now, if you notice carefully, their transaction revenue was 288, but their stable coin revenue was 172. They're getting really close to matching transaction revenue. So Wall Street has this kind of model where they're saying, look, Coinbase is an exchange. They are making money off of trading. And I think that's not necessarily what's happening. Now, I'll tell you guys why, why in a bit. Their blockchain rewards um, is actually based off of a couple of things their blockchain rewards are based off of their ethereum holdings so they're getting a lot of their money from blockchain rewards because they're staking that via beacon chain and so as ethereum's price goes up right they're still getting about three or four percent on the ethereum stakes this number is just going to go up because now they can sell ethereum at a higher price and still earning that five percent and that's going to be outpacing the inflation rate that you're getting so um, just between these two numbers, I suspect they're going to start to go up and interest income. This has more to do with just like some of the stuff that they're loaning out, things like that. This right here, it's also going to go up as the interest rates are actually elevated. So between these three numbers for Q3, you can already see this, right? The stablecoin revenue is really where the bulk of the money is. This part with interest income, that's a little bit that's been going down and their blockchain rewards went down because Ethereum's price at that time was lower. Yeah, as Ethereum's price goes up, this number is probably going to crack a little closer to like 100, 100 million, 200 million. It could be, it could be like 100 million, right? Um, custodial fees. This is actually a really big one. Custodial fees is what Coinbase charges for institutions for holding the Bitcoin for the ETFs. Now, this number is going to be a small amount because generally they give, um, they charge a very small fee to institutions for custodial stuff. And so this number is probably going to go up because it's a percentage based off of how much Bitcoin that they're actually in custody of. Now, if you take a look at the ETS for the last couple of days, how much inflows have been coming in, they're clocking in about $3 billion per ETF for the for top three. Now, if you do the math a little bit, this number should start to go up. This is before the ETFs. So we expect this number to go up as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to double, but I think that the custodial fee numbers is just going to start to go up a lot since Coinbase is the primary custodian for many of the large ones, including BlackRock and Fidelity. Now, this is where I'm more interested in this subscription revenue site. This number has been going up, all right? So if you take a look at Q3, when they introduced a lot of the new subscription stuff like Coinbase Prime, they also introduced things where Coinbase is going to be offering you discounts for trading and all these other uh, factors. This is where Coinbase is going to offset the lower fees that they may not be getting or that they're trying to compete with um, for other exchanges or other competition that are offering lower fees because... It, it, the exchange model is really built on the low low fees, low transaction costs, like zero commissions, like a Robin Hood's style. But the way they're operating this is that they're actually bundling this up with a subscription fee where your what your fees are going to be, your transaction fees are going to be almost zero. Now, the question you want to ask is why would they do that? Well, the simple reason is because during bear and bull markets, the stable coin, the transaction revenue is very uh, unpredictable. So during bear markets, the transaction revenue is extremely low because people are not trading. To offset that, they have people on the sub and services revenue, which during bear markets is going to smooth out the revenue. So if you take a look at this number right here and you look at your customer um, net revenue, this will never probably catch up to your customer net. However, the way they're going to offset that 
is they'll be using uh, perpetual futures and they'll be introducing um, futures trading and also derivatives. That it will should make up for the revenue costs because there's a lot more volume coming in. I think that the subscription revenue is going to be a huge one. Here they bundle it up with subscription and services, total services revenue. They include it as a service for both the stablecoin and the blockchain. Personally, I would have separated these two lines out, but again, that's just my take on it. All right, now for your net revenue. Um, this is just basically kind of like a miscellaneous for corporate interest. Now, keep in mind the stable, stablecoin revenue is derived from arrangement with USDC. Uh, prior, to, prior to that, they moved it to interest income. And then interest income also represents earned custodial funds as well as loans. So again, just kind of keep in mind that these numbers are going to actually go up. The question is for Q4, for the Q4 for 2023, how much of that will go up? Well, here's the trend, right? During the sell-off that we had um, in the summer, they got affected by about 10% as Bitcoin sold off a little bit. They were um, able to stabilize this down to only about, um, they only lost about $100 million, which is less than like, I would say less than 20%, a little bit less than 20% of their revenue they were able to offset this by a couple of things a couple of factors their transaction volume obviously went down this is what wall street's looking at they're looking at this consumer revenue i think that this right here the stablecoin revenue and the blockchain rewards and the interest income is going to start to close that gap now you might be asking to yourself okay so now what the reason why is because if you take a look at their institutional trading volume, okay? So we're not looking at fees, we're looking at trading volume. This is where like the, a lot of the money is gonna start to coming in. So for customer transaction volume, if you take a look at how much volume they're driving through, a lot of it's now shifting over to institutional, okay? Now, in the past, this really wasn't the case. Um, even during the bear markets, we did have a lot of institutional volume. We're not talking about fees generated from that because generally institutional fees are smaller than consumer fees. So what they call the take rate on the consumer side is usually higher. So even though you have less volume coming in, the fees are a lot higher. This has to actually match up with what they have. My personal guess is the institutional volume is just gonna keep on going up and up and up. Now, the other thing also is a lot of people are kind of, are kind of thinking to themselves, oh look, if you have the ETF, well maybe people are not gonna be transacting any as much as by the ETF straight up because they wanna lower that fee. And the answer is yes and kind of no. And the reason why is because Bitcoin has historically um, been about 38% of total trading volume. So there is no ETF right now for Ether and, if, and for stable coins for USDT. They actually combine this with USDC. There's actually a little thing with this one. And other crypto assets make up 20. If you add up the remaining of this, it should be about 60, 70, 60, 60%, 60 70 percent of that, you know, whatever that that difference is. Um, and that's more than half of their tra trading volume. So the 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 argument is that people are going to buy the ETF. It's it's somewhat, I think, a little misleading because it doesn't make up majority of their trading volume. Majority of the trading volume is actually between Ethereum and the smart contracts, the smaller asset classes. So when you're talking about looking at the ETF as a as a as a piece that is cannibalizing their total uh, transaction volume and trading volume, you're beginning to actually um, overestimate Bitcoin's um, total volume. Okay, now as a percentage of total revenue, so if we take a look at what that looks like, you can kind of see this a little better. We actually have crypto assets at 46%. There was actually more growth in the crypto asset space than in Bitcoin. And I suspect that we may lose some of this. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be 37, 39% forever. It may kind of come down because of the ETF. But what I'm saying is this is going to make up for it and of 18 and, and 46. Now, the reason I say that is because we're entering into Ethereum's bull, bull cycle with the Denkun upgrade and the base layer, um, the transaction fees for Ethereum are going to slow, are going to be cheaper. So a lot of people, what they're going to start doing is they're going to move on to base and they're going to transact on the Ethereum network. And even though the fees on Ethereum are less because you're paying less gas fees, they got to go through an exchange to convert all of that to fiat. 
And so I think that this number, this 46%, is going to go up um, for the rest of the year. Same thing with Ethereum. I think it's going to be a bigger percentage of their transaction revenue as people are exiting out and using Coinbase as a fiat on-ramp. Because in order for you to cash your chips out, you're going to need to go through an exchange to change it back to US dollars, right? And that, that, that doesn't include all the back and forth trading that you're going to be doing. Um, the second thing also I want to mention that I think it's very important is your operating expenses. Their operating expenses are very interesting because Coinbase has historically been on the high end side of their expenses because they're doing marketing, they're doing stock-based comp, they're doing a lot of other things that I think are considered to be, let's just say, um, pulling down their bottom line. So if you take a look at their percentage of net revenue, they have tried to reduce that transaction expense down as much as they can. Um, and this is usually through like layoffs and not layoffs, but just adjusting their tech. On the sales and marketing side, they have slowed down a lot. They didn't even spend on the Super Bowl ads, like just like last year. And they've been cutting down a lot of their 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 kind of like sales and marketing piece because well, obviously we're in a down market. And uh, the one thing I want to say is for their tech and development, they have cut down a lot on their tech and development. So you went from 556 to 322. I suspect they're going to probably level this or go a little bit lower uh, for this quarter. Uh, but they have introduced a lot of new products. So we'll see how this mix looks like. General administrative expense is pretty consistent. And uh, the most important part for their, for their total operating expense, they went from $1.1 billion to 754 in just four quarters. They were able to knock down their expenses by 34%. That, that's really, really good. That tells me that Coinbase is operating a very lean ship and they're trying to cut down as much as they can so that they can reach profitability without doing the adjusted EBITDA. Now, um, one thing I do want to mention for the liquidity, these, these, this company is super, super liquid. They have about $5.5 billion in cash, enough for them to sustain um, any sort of developments they got or any other bear markets. This, they have majority of money market funds and they've got USDC and corporate cash. But this is really important because they are super, super liquid. So whenever the market tanks or whenever they need to kind of take care of something, they will always have some access to cash to be able to deploy, either maybe uh, purchasing another company or perhaps maybe earning some interest on it. I mean, they've got a little bit of leeway on that, which to me is a very good idea. So they're not going to go bankrupt anytime soon, put it this way. All right. Now, I'm going to skip to this side because there's actually a lot of information on that. But looking at their products and services, okay, so this is the the part that I think has the most potential because if you think of Coinbase as an exchange of just transacting Bitcoin, I think you're kind of missing the boat. The one thing with crypto is crypto is always changing every single cycle. Last cycle, we had DeFi. The previous cycle, we had ICOs. Previous year, we just had straight up Bitcoin. Coinbase has always been introducing new products. And more importantly, this cycle, because we knocked out some of the larger ones like Binance and some of the other ones got sued. Um, Coinbase started as an asset class and where you're basically uh, Coinbase crypto's asset class, we're just trading that in. What they're trying to do is introduce a lot of different products like prime custody, spot management, asset management, derivatives exchanges, international exchanges. They're updating their financial system by introducing the Coinbase card, the USDC, Coinbase pay, direct deposit, international transfers, and also learning rewards. And the last one is going to be how they're going to be looking at the future of the internet, which includes Coinbase Cloud, Coinbase Commerce. Coinbase NFTs, Coinbase wallets, uh, uh, Web3 dApps. This is not. This does not look like an exchange. This looks to me like a tech company building upon crypto as a way to funnel in more users and to be able to be part of the development of technology. So this is actually a tech company, not a exchange or brokerage, right? And the reason I say that is because if you take a look at what they're doing um, on Coinbase Cloud, they're actually developing their own their own type of programs or dApps on Base. And Base was launched last summer, which had a phenomenal success. And they are including Coinbase wallets and NFTs as part of that development. So if you look at majority of them, the exchanges, yes, their primary, you know, their primary fee right now is transaction revenue for now. But looking forward, Coinbase is moving towards actually integrating more crypto as part of their plan. Now, 
The other thing also that's very, very important has more to do with the regulation. So the regulation is a big, big problem, right? And especially in the United States, because they obviously know that there's no traction right now going around. And what they're finding out is that from the regulation, 82% of them have already passed crypto legislation. So if you take a look at all these countries right now, with the exception of the ones that are shaded in gray, Canada, Mexico, UK, um, part of the Western Europe, you're looking at South, South uh, Latin America, you're looking at Singapore, Russia, Japan, South Korea, they've already passed like laws. So in a way, Coinbase doesn't really need to rely on US revenue as much as they did before because they can just go offshore. And we're already starting to see that there's regulation that's that's really crypto friendly and clear and transparent in the UK. As the world starts passing these laws, they're going to look for a regulated exchange. The only player in town right now that has the experience and the products that they feel that they could work with is Coinbase because they're actively getting more aggressive with that. And specifically in Western Europe, I suspect that over time, this is going to eventually open up the rest of the world. But if you have already first mover advantage on the regulation side, I think there's going to be a huge benefit. Now, we're looking at about a couple of years out, so this stuff takes a little longer. But in Hong Kong, as an example, they are already ready to go. I mean, they're literally already light years ahead. So I think that this regulation is a temporary, um, you know, overhang on the company because they just can't figure out how they're going to get the other countries to jump on board specifically the the united states but i think that this is going to change and probably we're going to get more blue here in the next couple of years okay now with the sec um this is going to be the wild card I, I consider this the ace in the the ace card the sec sued coinbase on june 6 and what they did was coinbase filed a dismissal for them on august 4th um that saying that some of the coins that they're offering are securities and there's this kind of back and forth on it i think coinbase has a good shot at negotiating with the sec as far as what coins could be listed and which ones are not but if they win this case it's going to be the same situation as what happened with grayscale what happened with grayscale back in august is the the courts decided that grayscale uh, grayscale sued obviously they went back and forth they kind of filed a complaint that the sec was going after them on the bitcoin etf the courts actually ruled in favor of Grayscale that set up the ETF in January. What's happening here is that if Coinbase wins this case, okay, let me just keep that in mind. If Coinbase wins this case, what's going to happen is all the coins that they're listing in right now are going to be available for everybody. And what's going to happen is going to usher in a new types of coins coming in because now the SEC says, well, they're not securities anymore so you can go ahead and list them that's going to drive more revenue which is going to drive more transaction volume and it's going to create this flywheel now that's this is called, called the ace card they have to win this court case if they don't win this court case it's going to be a little bit of a drawn up uh, situation but i suspect they've got a greater than 50 percent chance of winning based off the court documents that were released from the judge a couple of uh, last month and in there they were just kind of like not really the judge wasn't really uh, uh, sure that the sec's case was let's just say um strong and think they're going to come back to, with a judgment later but i think this is going to be like the the one that's going to send uh coinbase rocketing up higher okay now for the outlook for q4 as we start looking at coinbase there's going to be a couple of things you want to look for and they're releasing earnings on the 15th so it'll be interesting to see their subscription revenue, they're actually outlooking flat. So the analysts are expecting flat to down subscription, a flat revenue for this because of the fact that they didn't expect like, you know, any of this to continue growing. Their transaction expenses, their outlook for guidance for, for this quarter was mid-teens as a percentage of net revenue. Um, they're basically saying it's going to be pretty much, you know, same as depending on the revenue mix. Their technological and um, and development is going to be approximately the same, 525. They can cut this number down, you know, stocks going to shoot up. And their sales expenses are going to be 84. Now, one thing I want to say is that uh, a couple of things here is that their outlook is actually on the conservative side. Okay, they they mention for transaction revenue, which is going to be what Wall Street is going to look at. They're looking at $105 million of total transaction in October, though we urge caution in extrapolating these results. Okay, what they really mean by that is they're not really sure the transaction volumes are going to go up or down. It could be higher or lower. Now, here's my personal guess, and I hope you guys kind of walk with me on this. 
I think that 105 number is going to be way higher. And the reason I tell you that is because October was when we actually had that kind of like low period and the market just kind of like dumped. November and December, all through October, November, December, October was our like bottom part. That was like everybody kind of capitulated, everybody sold everything. November and December were actually on the upside. Now you can take a look at Robinhood's results, how that looked like for crypto. And I suspect, I suspect that this number is going to surprise a lot of people because they actually, they actually lowballed outlook. They actually lowballed their, their guidance. Um, and I think that Wall Street's actually looking at the subscription and services revenue um, as flat. Okay. Now, if the street is expecting a flat, which I don't think it's going to be flat, this thing is going to take off. All right. Now, I want to tell you guys another reason why. Here's Brian Armstrong right now. Um, he, he wrote this out um, just today. And he mentioned that Perpetual Futures and Spot, which is a big part of their push on Coinbase, keeps breaking our prior daily records. This is $672 million in the last 24 hours. Okay. Now, keep this number in mind. The 627 number extrapolation, it says, he says there's lots of headroom for derivatives trading growth on compliant infrastructure. So that means that people are looking for compliance. They're not looking for some random exchange that has a lot of like shady stuff going on. If you have a centralized exchange, choose a counterparty you can trust. Now, if we take a look at their nominal, their 24 all volume volume, right? Um, they're on a 30 day, they're running 7.5 billion, $7.4 billion on trading volume alone. All right, so if you take like, let's say a certain percentage of that, of that piece right there, of that 7 billion, that is really, really, really high. And notice carefully a couple of things. Their 30 day volume <clears throat> for Ethereum and for Bitcoin on their futures contracts are actually $2.8 billion. So between Ether and Bitcoin, they're, they're clocking in a quite a quite a, a very very high amount for that so this number continues to go up and up and up now for spot it's actually only 60 billion on the international i'm looking at the international exchanges because that's where their derivatives volume comes from and so the derivatives volume is just it dwarfs their trading spot volume so i think that this is going to be a very huge piece of information for us to kind of take a look at exactly how that's going to look like now one thing I also want to mention for Coinbase is Coinbase is running $2.5 billion in spot revenue. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a comparison for this. Out of the trading volume that we're having in here, right, if you take a look at how much volume we're generating, this is extremely high. And the reason, the reason this is extremely high is because Coinbase operates a large percentage of that um, in other coins itself. So if you go ahead and add up the aggregate, I think that with all these all these coins pumping in the last couple of months, this is probably going to provide Coinbase with a very juicy quarterly four results. Now for the outlook, it's going to look even better. Now the reason why for the outlook is going to look better is because if you take a look at what's happening with the halving cycle and what's happening with Ether and what's happening with all of that, there's going to be a lot more trading as Bitcoin's price goes up. So let me go back and just kind of show you as an example why I think that Coinbase lowballed lowballed their their guidance because they didn't want to they didn't really know at that time how they were going to actually run this. So the first thing, if you take a look at our um, last year, just for our last year, when they reported, okay, that was back in September, when they close out September, October, November, December. So we're looking for October. October, September, October, right? Coinbase, uh, Bitcoin was priced in at $26,000. Okay. So we were at the low point. In fact, from February till September, Bitcoin did really nothing. So their transaction volume reflected a flat market. However, after they, after the September period, when they reported and for going into October, right? You could see that the price of Bitcoin went from 27 to 50,000. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, right? The, the, the derivatives market drives on this volatility, okay? They, they, actually, they actually run on this volatility. So from no, October till December, which was our peak here, um, if you take a look at, let's clearly, we assume we close in January because they're not reporting for January, by the way. Coinbase finished at 40, uh, uh, crypto uh, went at 44. 
Now, if you take a look at the overall market cap, okay, I'm not going to look at uh, Bitcoin. I'm going to take a look at just the, the, the spot price as a whole and the volume as a whole. Okay, what you're going to start to see here is starting in October, okay, Coinbase went from uh, the, the market cap went from 1 trillion all the way up to all the way up to almost 2 trillion. So it made a 70% run. I'm going to ballpark this one. The numbers are not exactly like, you know, accurate, but we're going to go at 70%. That all of that volume went directly to all the exchanges, right? So you had a 70% increase in market cap, which includes Coinbase, Coin, uh, sorry, Bitcoin, and many of the altcoins. On the volume itself for transactions, you can take a look at the October period. We were down at 43 billion. On volume alone, we went to about 50 billion, 80 billion in December. So we almost doubled, and actually, if you take a look at October, we we're about 25 billion, 40, 40 billion, 25 billion in volume, and our peak here is obviously in January 11th during the ETF market. Now, if we extrapolate these results going forward, now, if we take a look at the trajectory of this, it's very clear that, with the exception of back in March, the volume was was really, really on the negative side. There was more actually more negative volume down versus this uh, midline point. And I think what's gonna happen is Coinbase is gonna ask themselves this question. They're like, wait a minute, how would that outlook look in the future? They're gonna talk about their expansion to the derivatives market. They're gonna talk about how this is generating a lot of interest. And more importantly, this is probably going to spur up a lot more trading volume on the international markets, which I think is where the growth is gonna be, that derivatives market, not the, not the domestic exchange ETF. So the ETF has, basically done a counterintuitive kind of demand for, for crypto because most people, what they're going to start to do is they're going to actually trade the altcoins to make up for the lack of Bitcoin volatility. Okay, so I'm not sure if you, if you understand that. The volatility that we got from Bitcoin transactions, it's going it, it, to, it's, it's the volatility is going down. As the volatility goes down, because people are not making as much money, they're going to find something else to make money. And I think what's being reflected here is the fact that, is that we have a lot of different opportunities for people to make money outside of Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is just literally the marketing tool. And I think this is going to be where people are going to underestimate, them, especially the people who believe that Bitcoin is an exchange, uh, Coinbase is an exchange, when in reality, Coinbase is in exchange as part of their revenue stream. But that's going to change in the next couple of months and also years. So my bet here is Coinbase to the moon. I think Coinbase is probably going to be a little volatile here. Um, but looking at the outlook and looking how things are are coming out to be, I think they have a much, much better chance of beating their guidance numbers from last quarter. So if you take a look at their last quarter numbers, um, their outlook for Q4, I think this is something that uh, most people are probably not paying attention to because they're, they're too focused on the transaction side of things and not really looking at the fact that they've branched out already two quarters ago. So Coinbase has already started to branch out and already implement a lot of that. And, and the reason I say that is because if you take a look at Coinbase um, as a company, okay, Coinbase as a company, they've already introduced various subscription services um, things that you, you know you would you you wouldn't think would generate a lot of volume, but they already have their wallet set. They already have um, their uh, Coinbase Prime. They have advanced tools for some of their higher end traders and high volume traders. Their wallet's already running with Base on the back. Coinbase Prime is going to be another one that they're using for sophisticated investors and institutions. Um, they've already uh, traded 145 billion dollars. Uh, in quarterly volume and 130 billion are in assets, um, which obviously that continues to grow. Um, I, I just think that the market is, the market doesn't really understand Coinbase too much. I think they they think that Coinbase is just this like you know money exchange remittance service type of thing, and I don't think they really understand where Coinbase is heading. So my take on this is um, yeah, Coinbase is going to be a very big part of crypto. And moving forward, I, I, I think anybody who thinks they're not, I think they're kind of a little bit missing the boat as a regulated exchange in an in a, in a environment in which regulation really is is detrimental to many crypto companies and projects. So 
I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm, I'm you know, kind of over extrapolating this, but I, I can't see a bare case for this unless I'm missing something, which maybe you guys can tell me. And if not, then uh, we'll see. All right. Have a great day. See you up.